All right, guys, Brian here with Vet Source checking in today. Working again in the garage, and I figured what I would do is go ahead and close the loop on our dash cluster teardowns um, and finish up with the second round of cluster teardowns uh, that we started with uh, the C4 early clusters, which would be the 84 through 89 dash clusters that we did a few weeks ago. If you haven't seen that video, I've got a link there at the top. Uh, where we tore down an Atari basically dashboard is what it's called. Now what we'll do today is I'll show you guys how to tear down the 1990 through 1996 clusters, uh, which would be the second half of the production run of the C4 Corvettes. Now as you can see, this looks vastly different than the earlier clusters, the Atari cluster that uh, sometimes gets maligned for no real good reason. Um, what we've got here is a unit that is both kind of a hybrid, and actually it is a hybrid, We've got a uh, analog gauges to the right and to the left tachometer, and of course oil pressure, oil temperature, temperature and volts, and in the middle stack up we've got the uh, LCD. Now I will say that this cluster, even though its style ran from 1990 to 1996, this is not interchangeable among certain years. So 1990 and 91 are one specific style of cluster where the um, I'm trying to think, I'm, I'm going to get this backwards probably, but the uh, sp speedometer portion of it, which is there in your LCD, which is that what's the, that's what the LCD displays, the speedometer is above the gas gauge. The gas gauge is actually right below the speedometer. Then in the 92 and 93s, they swapped it to where the speedometer was more driver-centric right in the middle, and the gas gauge is above the speedometer. And the 92 93s have... Uh, orange lettering on the back and they're backlit in orange. The 94, 95s, 96s like this style are white backlit or white um, silk screen in the back lettering with uh, an orange backlit. So you've actually got four different styles. I didn't even mention the fourth one. The fourth one would be the ones with the 8000 RPM tack which is actually the one that I took a thumbnail picture of. If you've never seen those I have another video of those that's the uh, 8 grand tack that was in the uh, ZR1s and the LT4 only cars like the LT4 here if you've seen before this car. So you've got 9091 style, 92, 93 style, 94, 95, 96, and then 90 through 96 LT4 ZR1 which actually have the differences in the lettering like I've talked about with the white or the orange lettering. So there's quite a bit there and one thing to put forward if you're looking at clusters uh, and you've got a 9091, 92 through 96 will not physically even work in your car. It won't display the digits correctly, so you can't do that. Now, you can, and 9091 won't work in the newer cars as well. So you 9091 guys are stuck with your clusters. 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, I'm pretty certain, if I'm remembering correctly, that they will back and forth interchange. It's just the, the clusters will look odd because they're not matching the rest of the lettering inside you know as far as the dash cluster goes so what we're going to do today is i'm going to go and tear this one down you can see physically it's a lot different than the other cluster i've kind of pre-started on this just so we don't spend an hour getting through this um, but there are five different sections here you've got an outer bezel here you've got the frame here you got the housing assembly for your instruments you've got a back cover right here and then inside you've only got one circuit board versus us two circuit boards on the other earlier C4. So let me get positioned correctly here. And we'll see. Let me just hold this for now because I can do this one-handed most of the time. So first things first, what you want to do is get this outer shield. Now this is something you can change pretty easily. Um, these often get scratched and dirty with time. Sometimes they're used, people use the wrong towels on these to clean this lens, or they'll put a cleaner on them. Don't ever put a cleaner on this thing because it will scratch it up and dull out the surface. And I'm pretty sure the aftermarket houses sell these reproduction now, but you still don't want to have to take it all apart to get to it. So this comes off easiest out of everything that's sitting here. Um, it just comes right out. And of course these are all just small 5.5 millimeter and then that comes straight off there you can see that just comes off you can see this one here 
is rather scratched up. So, and then of course, then we can actually get to our gauges. This was broken on this one before. This is why I kind of tore this one down. So, let's flip to the back side. So, you've got a, several components that are sandwiched in here that we have to get to. So, we're going to go ahead and take these out here. And luckily, it uses the same size screws all the way around. So, it doesn't really make it too difficult for us. But it is a little more tricky to get apart than the Atari clusters um, just because of the way they position this LCD in here and I'll show you here in just a second. So it's basically just pulling all these out and there's quite a few screws in here and then of course once you do that, that cover will just come out and out of the way. Now what's odd is that unlike the other ones, they made this so that you can get to the bulbs pretty easily by pulling off that back cover. So the bulbs, though, actually hold the rear circuit board in place in a couple of the positions. They actually hold it so it won't go anywhere. So we're going to go ahead and take these out. You can see that kind of pulled up there. And these just turn left counterclockwise to pull these out. Famous last words. And once those are out of the way, we can get to our inner structure here. Now, unlike the other one, of course, now we've got back to that analog gauge setup. The analog gauge is plugged directly into the circuit board. Now I'm coming back on the back side. And sometimes these don't come out that easy. So sometimes it's better to take off the front part first. I just did this for now, but you can see they actually uh, marked all these oil pressure, oil temperature, water temperature, volts, and of course your left um, illumination, door ajar. These actually tell you, so the circuit board is marked for you to see which ones are gonna go where. So they did a really good job with that, you know, upshift light, change oil, security. And of course, this is your main feed wire coming in. This circuit board is a lot less busy than the one in the other cars. Now this connection here, right here that you're seeing, this is the connector that goes straight into that LCD and I'd already pre-connect, disconnected that just because it made it easier on me, but I'll show you. And on the back side here, you can see these are the backs of your oil pressure, oil temperature, volt, battery, gauges, and this is for your tachometer, so you have five connections total here. Okay, so let's pull this back over to the front side. Okay, now what we need to do is go ahead and get this outer bezel out, which I shouldn't have done that. I've got to go from this direction. So we're going to pull this out. And these are essentially just attaching the white main housing to that outer flared bezel, that black colored bezel that holds this in place. I've got one tucked over here. Oh, that one wanted to be difficult. Okay. And we've got another one right there in this corner. And then once we do that, we can go ahead and separate. Well, I should say we can separate it. Maybe I missed something here. Hold on, let me look. Ah, yes. There's always the ones in the corners that you forget about. Okay, one here. One thing about this one is there's a lot of screws on the earlier Atari Dash, but there are quite a bit of fasteners on this one too. All right, so we've got that out of there. And there's our outer bezel. And of course you can see GM part number on this. Everything has a GM part number on it, so you could run around and look for individual part numbers if you wanted to. Um, but you're kind of getting the weeds on this. Okay, so now what we're left with is, of course, this face here, this face here, and then our LCD. Now, it doesn't become readily apparent what has to come out here, 
but I'm going to show you. This this has to be done really gently because the one thing about these is um, the LCDs are what usually go bad on these. And they go bad because they either crack or they separate. The sandwich uh, separates and the LCD leaks out of them and they don't read correctly. What you get is a bunch of spotty half looking numbers in there. And then it doesn't, you can't tell what's going on. So let me show you how to get this out. The table is squeaking like crazy. All right, so if you look here in this corner, you'll be able to see that this is slotted into place and see how it's held in there. Let's see if I can get a better shot of this. Yeah, right there. So this is slotted into place and it doesn't give you a whole lot of room to work with. So what you gotta do is very gently with your fingers, not with anything else. See how I can move it just enough to clear that upper spot. And you also want to try to keep your fingers off of it. That's one other thing. And then I can just go ahead and pull it up and out of there. Okay. Um, this is the one that kind of flummoxes everybody because it's not readily apparent why it comes out. Now this LCD still looks fairly decent. See how it's darker colored. There's no cracks on this one. You can actually see the two pieces are still laminated together. So we've got this. And of course there's that coloring in the back which creates the color because the LCD naturally does not have any color and of course there's a gasket right here. Now one other thing you can do, it's not necessary, is you can actually pull these very gently straight up and those will come, the needles will come right off of there and then after you get that out of there then what's going to happen is this is just going to pull straight up and out and there's that back side with those uh, potentiometers and of course what they really did that made it kind of cool is see these this these like racetrack looking things and the channels here so those actually just fit in the channels and that's how that thing fits that down there so they make it so it doesn't you know we have a problem with it and then of course we just pull straight up with this on that one and there's our tachometer so that is basically it guys um you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight major pieces there to take this apart. Like I said, the trickiest part is getting that LCD out of this little housing in here without damaging it because it's something you don't want to do. So that uh, is going to wrap things up today. I'll be back again in a few more days with another teardown video for you guys. Show you what we're looking at and uh, we'll go from there. If you got any questions or comments, make sure you leave them below. And I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.